Welcome to the EA Sports UFC 5 Gameplay Deep Dive. My name is Marshall Mind and today we'll be talking about some brand new features designed to deliver a whole new level of MMA authenticity and immersion to the game. We'll look at features like the real impact system, new striking animations, doctor stoppages, a brand new exciting submission system and plenty more. And with that, Let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about today is the real impact system, which is essentially a catchphrase for the conglomeration of health events, facial injuries, full body hit reactions, overall authentic damage, and the impact they have on a fight. Unlike previous games where injuries to the athletes were mainly superficial, UFC 5 introduces an innovative impact system that accurately reflects the physical toll the athlete undergoes during a match, which influences both the athlete's condition and the ultimate match results. This is demonstrated visually with the all new damage icons. Now before we get into these icons, I, I can't stress enough just how much more impactful this new damage system is going to be in UFC 5. The few times that I've played against another player, every single time I got cut, it was like, oh my God, you really gotta reevaluate what you're doing. You gotta watch out. In UFC 5, as you guys are gonna see once we start talking about these damage icons in a moment, getting cut, getting damaged, it really, really means something and has an impact in the way the fight actually plays out. The vision penalty icon appears when an athlete gets cut in areas of the face where bleeding could lead to visual impairment, like the brows, the eye, the forehead, etc. This leads to an increase in the amount of damage you take on the affected side while the penalty is active. If no further impact occurs to the affected location in 30 seconds, the penalty is lifted. The penalty is also lifted at the start of a new round. The breathing penalty icon appears when an athlete sustains an injury to the nose or mouth. This impact will decrease the short-term stamina recovery for as long as the penalty is active. If the athlete can protect against subsequent damage to the affected area, the penalty will be lifted in 30 seconds or at the start of a new round. The stun icons are broken down into three different icons. The head stun icon, the body stun icon, and the leg stun icon. The head stun icon appears as the result of any health event to the head. The body stun icon appears as the result of any health event to the body and the leg stun icon appears as the result of any health event to the leg. The health icons are also broken down into three different icons, the heart icon, the arm health icon, and the leg health icon. These icons authentically represent the effect a submission attempt can have on an athlete. The heart icon appears when a player loses a chunk of their maximum stamina due to a deep choke. The goal here is to accurately represent how chokes, especially deep ones, can negatively affect an athlete's overall stamina. The arm health icon is meant to signal a loss in maximum block health due to a deep arm submission. Whether it's an arm bar or a kimura, overextending the arm realistically leads to a reduction in blocking ability and UFC 5 represents this authentically. The leg health icon signals a loss in permanent leg health when a player survives a deep leg lock. Leg locks, of course, are some of the most potent submissions an athlete can endure. So whether it's a deep heel hook or a calf slicer, surviving will not leave the athlete unscathed, and UFC 5 authentically represents this reality. The next thing we'll take a look at is doctor stoppages. For the first time in the EA Sports UFC series, the doctor stoppage will now be another viable way for players to end the match. The doctor stoppage icon will appear initially as a result of any facial injury, not including injury to the mouth. At first, the icon appears yellow, but as subsequent impact is received on the affected area, the icon will appear more red. The more red the icon becomes, the closer the ref is to halting the match briefly and requesting a doctor check. If the doctor examines the injury and determines it is not severe enough to warrant a stoppage, he will exit the cage and the match will continue. However, if he examines the injury and determines that it is indeed significant enough, he will signal to the ref and the match will end. The introduction of doctor stoppages to UFC 5 is just another way that the game truly delivers an authentic mixed martial arts experience. But 
it also adds another layer to gameplay. Being defensively sound has never been more important, and because of this, there has been some significant enhancements to the core defensive tools in the game. Footwork, blocking, head movement, and lunges have all received significant upgrades, resulting in a substantial improvement in their reliability for defensive maneuvers. Now, this is an area that a lot of players definitely complained about in UFC 4, right? Like pressure is too strong, block breaking is too strong, being defensively sound in UFC 4 is not as easy as it's supposed to be. And don't get me wrong, in UFC 5, when you run into a player that knows exactly what they're doing, you can definitely still get run down with strikes. But as we start talking about these new defensive tools in UFC 5 and how they've been upgraded, how they've been buffed, once you master these and once you start using using them as intended, you're going to notice you'll have a lot more success in UFC 5 than you did in UFC 4 when it comes to dealing with pressure and just overall aggression. In UFC 5, head movement in all directions is far more responsive. It is faster and it costs less stamina. In addition to that, the vulnerability incurred while using head movement has been reduced. Altogether, these advancements collectively establish head movement as an even more potent defensive tool in UFC 5. Lunges will now also cost less stamina as well as concede less vulnerability, which means players will be able to use them a bit more freely compared to UFC 4. And let's not forget about footwork. The significance of the footwork stat has been amplified in UFC 5, specifically when it comes to locomotion. Athletes with a high footwork stat will move noticeably faster, and athletes with low footwork stats will move slower. So if your goal is to operate from the outside and be slick and run circles around your opponent, this will be a much more viable strategy in UFC 5. Now, this topic of defense has always been a nagging issue in the EA Sports UFC community, and I really wanted to dive a bit deeper into this just in case I missed something, which is why I sat down with Eves Gomez, an EA Sports UFC developer, who, by the way, used to be a game changer. Some of you probably already know who this is. He explained to us a little bit deeper in regards to what we've already talked about, right? With the head movement, the lunges, the locomotion. He goes a little bit deeper and not only explains to us what they did, but also why they did it. What was the logic behind why they made those decisions that they made? So here's Eve's talking about these changes. All right, so can you talk about how vulnerability is going to affect head movement in UFC 5? The frames part of it is just the first part, like the first buff. And it was also buffed regarding the stamina cost. It now costs a lot less across the board. And the vulnerability was decreased and the mitigations were increased. We also added mitigation to when you try to dodge sideways against the frontal attack and it still catches you. So if you're trying to dodge a jab but you don't get out of the way in time, it will still grant you a little bit of vulnerability because you're like you're slipping out of the way. So it's like the punch is glancing off your face. All right, so earlier when you said frames, are, are you saying that fighters with higher head movement stats will now have access to more evasive properties, which will allow them to evade shots a lot easier than, say, UFC 4? Very slightly. Uh, it, it was buffed across the board by one frame. The low end is not as low as before. So a fighter with a bad head movement stat won't be as slow. And as the fighters get tired throughout the fight, they don't get chunks of slowness added to them. Yeah, but overall, the timing of it is slightly faster and varies more granularly. And what about with lunges when it comes to vulnerability? Has that been reduced, increased? Like, what are we gonna see in, in UFC 5 when it comes to that? When you lunge away from a strike, you take less damage. What about when you lunge directly into a strike? Are we still gonna have vulnerability with that? Has that been increased? Has that been reduced? that gives you vulnerability which has been decreased yeah it was a bit much yeah it was like maybe the most common way of getting like a flash kill you can see the lot. and in terms of the the footwork stat right like like showing the changes between the fighters that are faster and fighters that are a bit slower like we're, we're definitely getting a, a bigger difference between those two fighters in ufc5 right yeah in comparison to ufc4 yeah there's a bigger contrast now more precisely the high end 
stays the same. So someone with maxed out footwork stat will remain just as fast. The change is that someone on the low end of it will be slower. Defense is not the only important aspect of a match though, and in UFC 5, going on the offense has never felt better. UFC 5 introduces brand new animations for punches, kicks, elbows, and knees. To talk about a few, the new leg kick animation is beautiful and the knees are so realistic and powerful looking. The new pivot left hook animation will come in handy when dealing with pressure and the new front kick to the body animation is snappy and beautiful. But that's not all. With the power of next generation graphics, visual cues as well as hit reactions showing just how impactful strikes are have all been amplified. When you throw a strike and it makes impact with the athlete, improved facial deformation sends a ripple through the face and body. UFC 5 has also revamped striking controls to be more dynamic, giving players a lot more control over basic strikes, advanced strikes, as well as combinations. Unlike in UFC 4, where you had to press two buttons simultaneously to perform a strike as basic as an uppercut, in UFC 5, it is as simple as holding the right bumper and pressing either square or triangle for the lead and rear uppercuts. A new dedicated spin input has also been introduced to the game. And so rather than having to remember a multitude of button combinations for different spinning attacks, the X and circle buttons pressed together will always result in a spin. And when you pair that with another button input, like circle for example, your fighter will perform a turning side kick to the body. The button input to initiate a clinch has also changed and it's a change that I personally really appreciate. It now maintains a uniformity with the takedown input which enhances the overall experience. In UFC 5, triggering a clinch is as simple as simultaneously pressing square and X. But that's not all that was done to the clinch. And I definitely had to find out from Eves if anything has been done to improve the clinch from UFC 4 because I know I'm not the only one that's curious about this. A lot of players who had issues with the clinch because let's be honest, man, it was a sore spot in UFC 4. A lot of those same players are going to be very curious. What was done? How was it improved? What changes are we going to see that will make our quality of life a lot better in UFC 5 in regards to the clinch? So here is Eves giving us some insight into what was done to the clinch in UFC 5. Yeah, so we did a few things. The main thing is that it is easier to prevent people from clinching you by striking them. This one frustrating thing is that, okay, if you're gonna clinch me, I'm just gonna punch out of it. But in UFC 4, you're almost always you would punch them and they will clinch you through it as an exchange. Exchanges into the clinch can still happen, but if you're punching someone with a straight attack, we figured that it would make sense that they, that should be the thing that would kind of push their face away, not let them clinch you. So any jab with straight will nullify a clinch attempt. Now, furthermore, any retreating attack, like any sort of retreating attack, makes them makes the clinch not stick to you. You're moving away, right? So they can't clinch you if you're using a retreat attack. And we made more subtle changes to the flow of when you're striking someone as you're trying to escape the clinch. For a specific window, they can't block when they're actually exiting, right? That is still possible, but it is harder to do now, and it is especially harder from the cage single under position. But the, the defensive striking the clinch is generally more powerful than it seems. The truth is that if people clinch you through your strike, you actually have the upper hand. If you continue to strike, it will take them out of what they're trying to do. Like you will, it will interrupt the need that they try to throw you and stuff like that. Now let's delve into what I consider to be the most exhilarating transformation in EA Sports UFC 5 the seamless submission mechanics. For the first time in EA Sports UFC history, submissions are now performed without relying on a minigame. In earlier iterations like UFC 4, triggering a submission, be it a joint lock or a chokehold, necessitated engaging in a minigame to secure or counter the move. This element was somewhat detached from the core grappling system. However, in UFC 5, this dynamic has been seamlessly integrated, making a groundbreaking evolution. Allow me to explain. Upon initiating a submission in UFC 5, for example, a guillotine, 
you'll have two choices. You can choose to force your opponent to submit by crossing both feet behind their back and squeezing, leading to a tap, or you can choose to advance to the mount, a more advantageous position. And although you gave up the submission, you secured another favorable position. As the attacker, the direction of your inputs will always remain the same regardless of the submission. Up to submit and down to advance to another dominant position. As the player who's defending, the directions of your input will also always remain the same regardless of the submission. Left to escape and also right to escape. Now, I understand the potential worry that this new submission system could oversimplify submission and make them too easy. Well, rest assured, the team accounted for this concern because in tandem with the regular HUD displaying head, body, and leg health, an additional gauge now shows your submission health. Depending on the strength of the submission, your athlete's submission defense stats, as well as your current stamina level, it might require as many as three submission attempts to completely deplete your submission health. And when that happens, the submission is instantaneous. It is important to note that despite this protective measure, one-shot submissions remain plausible in UFC 5. These occurrences are exceptional and typically happens when a player has severely mismanaged their stamina, granting the attacker a substantial stamina advantage upon initiating the submission. When it comes to submissions in UFC 5, stamina is king, so make sure to manage yours. Contextual submissions have also been expanded in UFC 5. If you find yourself in sight control and you try to escape to half guard by framing and bridging up, be careful because your opponent could very well counter that with an arm triangle. If you find yourself entangled in a rubber guard and you try to recover the full guard, also be careful because you could find yourself fighting off an arm bar. UFC 5 introduces a multitude of contextual submissions that once mastered imbue the ground game with a heightened sense of authenticity. Adding to the authenticity of the ground game, the ground and pound system has also been revamped. All new ground and pound animations from straight punches to hooks, including high impact elbows to the head and body, accurately captures the visceral reality of ground and pound. And unlike past iterations of the game, when you stop the opponent on the ground, the reaction they give you is believable. So we've talked about the brand new submission system, we've talked about contextual submissions, we've talked about the brand new ground and pound, but I'm sure a lot of people still have questions in regards to the core ground game, right? Like how is it different from UFC 4? What else was done to it in UFC 5? And once again, I sat down with Eves Gomez and he's going to talk about some changes that might not be immediately noticeable, but they'll still have a major impact in the way the game actually plays on the ground. If you have pretty much a whole round on the ground, your stamina, like your permanent stamina consumption should be similar to if you have a whole round striking. The ground won't be like a refuge of almost no stamina cost anymore. With the new submission systems, seamless submissions, we added a lot of depth, but we didn't want it to be intimidating for new players or players who are starting to grapple. You can play grapple assist within submissions. It all flows like for a casual player, like it's pick up and play. You're not gonna play at a high level, but you're not gonna get stuck. Now there's no more meaning game. And when you're using grapple assist, grapple assist just continues to work as you get into the actual submission. You can use the submission intent to just keep going and finish the opponent. If you're defending, just trying to get up, you can keep just doing that. Or if you're trying to ground a pound, you can escape a submission right into a ground and pound position to punish your opponent for doing it. Do you try to submit you? You can even, as a defender, use the submission intent to counter a submission to one of your own if your fighter can do that. A lot of the fanciest things in this system actually happens a lot. You get to see a lot of cool animations because you're often sort of, especially if you have two beginners playing with grapple assist, you're constantly racing. And when you're racing, like you know that that's when you see the coolest stuff, right? We get into an armbar, like immediately, we just, you try to escape, I try to finish, we go into a belly down armbar, you flip, and then end up inside your leg. All of these crazy stuff, the coolest stuff, actually happens a lot when you're playing as a beginner. In your own pace, you can start to explore depth and changing your controls and so on and so forth. And there are more, more changes to the ground. So it was almost impossible 
to get to back mount and back flat positions. Because when you're doing it, the people could just roll for free and end up in back sitting, which is a little less dominant for you. They cannot do that for free anymore. If they have a stamina advantage, they can do that just like in USA 4. If they don't, they can. So now there is a new contextual transition there for when you're trying to get back mount and they're trying to roll. It's a brand new result. I won't say what it is, but it's not back sitting. Now it should be much more viable to get to the actual back mount and back flat and use the submissions from there, which are supposed to be very juicy, and they are. With the real impact system, intuitive striking controls, improved defensive tools, and all new submission mechanics, EA Sports UFC 5 offers the most immersive, authentic, and exciting mixed martial arts gameplay experience to date.